two secretaries on the agenda yesterday, and a third secretary is speaking today. He is joining us now live. That is Commerce Secretary Gary Locke. Mr. Secretary, a pleasure to have you with us, sir. Good to be with you. Let's start, first of all, since this is an International Dialogue Day, with a discussion of your trip with Secretary Tu to, to China, uh, one that ended with a partnership, but maybe not as broad a partnership as you had hoped. Well, actually, it was a very eye-opening uh, trip to see that China is spending hundreds of millions of dollars uh, uh, on energy efficiency technology, uh, creating jobs uh, in the energy uh, arena that mm -hmm. will meet the energy needs of the entire world. And uh, they're building a, 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 a wind farm that's going to be the largest in, in the world. Right. I mean, they are working on smart grid. I mean, they are moving aggressively. And the challenge for America, quite frankly, is are we going to have the jobs being supplied in China on the energy, uh, clean energy, alternative energy, energy efficiency front? Mm -hmm. Or will we, who really pioneered uh, all this technology uh, have those jobs here. Uh, good paying jobs uh, here in America, uh, helping uh, put, paying good family wage jobs, and uh, but also meeting the energy climate change needs of the world. Mm -hmm. There's really no reason why we should be letting all these jobs go to China. Mm -hmm. That's why the energy policy before the Congress is so critical because investors and the private sector need that certainty, that predictability of what the rules of the game are, what the incentives are, and the framework by which they can uh, invest. And I've heard from so many companies saying they're reluctant to step in. They're ready to, mm -hmm. but until they have a clear signal uh, from Congress as to what the rules of the game are, uh, they're not going to step forward. Well, I'd like to follow up on that, Mr. Secretary, because you used a benign term, that energy policy before Congress. But when it includes a cap and trade, it uh, really elicits vitriol from both sides here. Um, your role with the administration has been to push this cap and trade plan. Uh, every member of the cabinet seemingly has done that. What is your big pitch to big business about this when so many members want to see a carbon tax rather than a cap and trade? Well, this is really providing market, uh, a market-based system of mm -hmm. capping uh, carbon emissions where there is a cap, but then uh, companies are free to uh, form partnerships and, and look at ways in which they can offset uh, or get credit for what they're uh, emitting uh, by uh, paying for whether it's planting of trees and it's going to create a, and, and, or even investments in, in other companies that are focusing on reducing carbon emissions. So this is one way in which we have the private sector actually involved in the creation of new jobs mm -hmm. and in reducing uh, our carbon footprint. I mean, you know, so many people say we don't want government involved in this. Well, this is really letting the private sector innovate and really move into this sphere. Uh, if a cap and trade is enacted, Mr. Secretary, we have the Energy Department involved, the EPA, now the Agriculture Department is involved, Treasury gets in on it because it's an international carbon market. What is the role of commerce? Well, the role of commerce is really to help create these jobs and to mm -hmm. uh, help entrepreneurs really move forward because, you know, China is creating these jobs. We don't have the jobs right now in America. We're poised to do that. Mm -hmm. And so we're working with companies on how they can innovate, how they can be competitive, how they can be viable, how they can reformat uh, whether they're manufacturing processes to help uh, produce and manufacture wind turbines. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the potential is endless. But the key to that really is uh, helping entrepreneurs. And that's why today uh, we've announced the uh, formation of an Office of Entrepreneurship and Innovation. Mm -hmm where we will be really looking at the policies that can help create more jobs in America mm -hmm. from innovation. In fact, in the last 25 years, virtually all of the net new jobs in America were created by companies less than five years old, these entrepreneurs. I mean, they started off like kind of like Bill Gates and, and Dell uh, and, and, and others, but they've grown into big companies. Virtually all the net new jobs in America in the last 25 years were created mm -hmm. by small startups, by mm -hmm. startups. And that's what we need to look at. We need to figure out what are the policies and programs that are inhibiting their formation, their growth, mm -hmm. and what type of policies can we drive that will really help move great ideas, the, the, the research in our colleges, universities, our federal labs, into commercialization. Now, you mentioned Microsoft, which is from your home state of Washington. Uh, do you see other companies, clean energy companies specifically, uh, in your home state as future Microsofts to some degree? Uh, Secretary Chu regularly points to the BPA, which is a different animal, but as uh, an example of wind at its finest in the U.S. But you know your home state especially well. It has extensive renewable resources. What's next? What's the next big thing? coming out of Washington State on the clean energy front. Well, actually, for instance, in Washington State, we have one of the premier smart meter companies where they make meters that go on the side of your house that can actually uh, communicate and, and give 
real-time measurements of your use of electricity. And why is that important? Because some utilities now are actually looking at offering different prices for the energy consumed during different times of the day mm -hmm. to help reduce the demand for electricity, especially during those peak hours, so mm -hmm. that we don't have to build all these power plants just to handle the demand for electricity, let's say from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. When people come home and you know turning on the lights and using their stoves, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. If you can encourage people to use electricity during different parts, different times of the day mm -hmm. by having different prices, then you can reduce that con demand for electricity, not have to build as many coal-powered uh, 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 electrical plants, generating right. plants. In short, you're talking about smart grid technology. Smart grid technology, mm -hmm. and in fact today, uh, we're announcing the, the first set of standards that uh, our Department of Commerce, uh, through our National uh, Institute of Standards and Technology, mm -hmm. have, have released, and we hope to have all these standards in place for the smart grid. Uh, by the end of next year, 2010. A very mm -hmm. ambitious, very aggressive schedule that a lot of people are saying, oh, you're moving too fast, you're moving too fast. But if we don't do it, other countries will, and we'll lose jobs. In some senses, we can't move quickly enough. All right, Commerce Secretary Gary Locke, a pleasure Thank to you. have us with you, sir. Right. And Good. we'll look forward to your talk later today.